Hi, folks. Welcome back to the uh, Steve Molsberg Show. And we're going to get to our panel and talk about what's going on uh, with the Ebola situation in Dallas and beyond. Uh, but first, um, I want to uh, let you know about something that I'm sure you know about. But it's a brand new book, a great new book that we've been promoting here on Newsmax. And it's by Newsmax contributor and political analyst Dick Morris. It's called Power Grab, Obama's Dangerous Plan for a One-Party Nation. Now, uh, I've interviewed him on this book. We've interviewed him on the, on the other shows as well. And I urge you to get a copy of this number one Amazon bestseller. Go to powergrab411.com and get your copy now. That's powergrab411.com. And uh, be in on what everybody is reading and what everybody is talking about. All right, joining us now is board certified uh, otolerologist. Uh, I can't say it correctly. I knew I'd, I'd screw it up. Uh, Dr. Elena George and former Lieutenant Governor of New York and Chairman of the Committee for Reducing Infection Deaths uh, and also Senior Fellow at the London Center for uh, Public Research, Betsy McCoy. Uh, let me ask uh, you, doctor, uh, first, um, are you satisfied with uh, what uh, has been done so far since the revelation that we have the first case of Ebola down in Dallas? No, I can't say that I actually am satisfied. I think there's a lot of things that we're not being told, and it's hard to, to make any decisions to protect yourself um, if you don't know exactly what's going on. I was really struck by the fact that this patient entered a, a hospital and stated that he was from an area that was affected with Ebola, Liberia, and they had sent him home. That's the biggest point that really, really concerns me as, as a physician. I mean, someone had to take an intake and do a history and just to not even pay attention to the fact that he should have at least been brought into the hospital and, and put on isolation while they were checking him. Yeah, and, and, you know, Betsy, we've been hearing about that uh, uh, and trying to figure out who dropped the ball. There were accusations he never told us, but the family say, yes, we told you. Uh, supposedly a nurse wrote it down, but it never got to the, you know, when you come to the emergency room, but it never got to the doctor. Somebody dropped a big, huge ball here. Well, the key is that most American hospitals are unprepared to cope with Ebola. As you know, these very same hospitals are plagued by more common hospital infections like MRSA, C. diff, VRE, that race through hospitals killing, according to the CDC, 75,000 patients each year. The same hospitals where infection control is so lax that they allow those hospitals to spread, those infections to spread, are also going to be incapable of containing Ebola. And as Dr. George just pointed out, the lack of rigor, the, the fact that even if one nurse took the history and wrote down that this patient was from Africa, had just been to Africa, and failed to communicate it to the rest of the medical team, shows lax infection control. That's exactly what we're dealing with. So when I hear Dr. Frieden from the CDC say, American hospitals are prepared to cope with Ebola, he's wrong. Dr. Uh, uh, Be Betsy is, uh, is absolutely correct, is she not? If we, if we can't control the, uh, the aforementioned infections that she talked about uh, you know, to a great extent, uh, then how are, we gonna, how are we gonna control Ebola in these hospitals? I think she makes an excellent point, which I've said myself, and that's the problem. It's, it's as if we're told, nothing to see here, move along, we have everything under control, and this is, we got this, which is not exactly the kind of attitude I think you should have when this this particular virus, when the CDC works with it, is done on a biohazard level four with a negative pressure room with people in hazmat suits so that they're they're contained or protected from getting any exposure. That pales in comparison to somebody walking in an emergency room four days amongst the members of our community and spreading something and then saying, oh, everybody should be fine, we'll just watch them. Technically speaking, those people should be in quarantine. That's how I would expect them to take this, you know, seriously. And it's it's concerning. That's right. And whether Americans or how many Americans die from Ebola will depend almost entirely on what hospitals do when travelers infected with Ebola, knowingly or unknowingly, come to that hospital for care. We saw something very similar in 2003 during the SARS epidemic in Asia. If you see 
what happened there in Toronto and Vancouver, two very different cities. On the very same day, Travelers with SARS arrived at two hospitals. In Vancouver, they had rigorous infection control, and as soon as that SARS patient walked in, the risk was obvious. They isolated that patient, and not one other person got SARS. But in Toronto, where infection control was very lax, 44 people died of it. Almost all of them were healthcare workers, patients, or visitors all to right. the hospital. We're going to be rejoined by the doctor and by uh, Betsy McCoy uh, in just a few minutes. But first, uh, we're going to be joined by John Yu, former DOJ in the Bush administration. Don't miss it.